Good morning. Welcome to Hobby Hi-Fi. Just want to fill you folks in a little bit on uh, what we're using to do all this with is a, a Samsung S9 phone. Uh, and so why is this pertinent? Well, because I'm a bit of a techie as well as a uh, stereo geek. And so I know the two may go hand in hand, but uh, um, I think it's helpful to know how to actually do, you know, start from scratch on, on some of these video ideas. I've actually been trying to get a couple of my older friends. <laughs> I use that term loosely, uh, but the older generation, uh, you know, would rather do things over a phone call or in person. And so what I've decided to do is, uh, in this time that we are with, with COVID and uh, mutants and variants and all the restrictions going on still uh, in February of 2022, I've decided to try to do things more uh, online. And I think a lot of people are deciding to do that. Um, and so... Um, this may be the future of information. And so I think a lot of people need to try to grasp that. And I understand the, uh, beauty of face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, but <clears throat> this makes, uh, any information that anybody has available to anybody. Um, and so that, that type of information, uh, has a, a lot of power to it. And so... Anyway, um, I'm going to try to give you as much information on everything, uh, even some background information on me eventually. But uh, up until now, the the uh, pieces that I'm going to be reviewing or methods or ideas or uh, what I do, basically, I'm just going to start putting it out there and um, and we can change it as we go. But for now, I'm using a phone, and what I've done is I've, I'm using the rear camera. So I've gone into my phone settings, and I have adjusted the rear video camera resolution down to 1280 by 720p. So what that is, that's shrinking the original size of the video, uh, which I think is necessary once I realized that uh, a six-minute video that I take here and I'm at three minutes right now took about uh, 15 to 20 minutes on a fast internet connection to upload that to uh, the uh, the YouTube servers and so not a huge deal and that may be throttled I'm not sure exactly how that works but uh, you feel kind of bad uh, or I do trying to take a, and it's really, I don't think it's very necessary to take a, uh, you know, a 4K file, which nowadays is huge. It would probably take an hour, I don't know, but maybe even more to upload this video um, that we'll try to cap off in six or eight minutes. But, um, so anyway, I've shrunk that original video quality size down, and I think it still looks quite good, and I'm pretty happy with the fact that it's uh, up, uploading uh about uh, mm, uh, for every minute of video, it's taking uh, two, two to three, you know, three minutes maybe uh, of upload time. Um, so that's what we're we're working with today, and um, uh, today I wanted to break into a strange thing that I decided to do a while ago, which was <laughs> not strange, I guess, really, but how do I tie my, my uh, digital files into my home theater network? And so uh, a lot of people are using what they call a network um, attached server, uh, and they will put, say, a hard drive, and they'll plug it directly into their router, and they can access their hard drive and, and play their music from there. There are a lot of file sharing uh, or, or server type programs available now to use 
to be able to try to share your your files over a network um, and so without getting too far in depth with that um, one thing I started doing a while ago was ripping some CDs to a hard drive which is uh, what I think a lot of people are, are trying to do people try to convert the old things that we have the vinyl even um, quite easily now um, thrown right on a hard drive uh, which can or a or a pen drive which is a, a thumb drive in other words you know for a portable drive that you can actually take out and put in your pocket uh, either via and uh, utilize that via USB or you can even uh, nowadays uh, put it on a chip so you can put it on a micro SD card and you could take that micro SD card, which is the size of a half the size of a stamp, and you can store enough music on that so that you wouldn't play it all in a year. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. So the the size of these storage things have shrunk to the point where it's uh, your library can literally be in your pocket and available at all times, and even on your phone. So one of the issues that I have, and we're at six minutes, so I'm going to try to wrap this up relatively quickly now, but one of the issues that I had uh, was uh, I'm a bit of an audiophile. And so what the problem raised immediately was the fact that I can hear my laptop. I'm not sure if you can. The closer I get to it. I don't know if you can hear that fan or not. But as a fan in this old laptop, why did I even choose this old laptop? Well, I'll tell you why. For one thing, it's 10 or 15 years old, so it's outdated. This is a gateway. And it was a gamer's laptop in its day. I think it's a P7805 or something like that. I've upgraded a little bit of RAM and things like that. But amazing, it still runs, and it's even running Windows 10 at this point. But one of the most fantastic things that I found about this amp, uh, this um, laptop, is that it's got uh, <laughs> a digital output for audio. Now that's hard for me to believe. As you look at this particular laptop. It's got, uh, you know, a Firewire output or whatnot. It's got uh, USB. It's got uh, an Ethernet, HDMI, even uh, um, you know, for an additional monitor and whatnot. But you'll see that what I have going on here is an optical cable. It's hard. You can't tell that by looking at this. But this is actually an optical cable that is plugged into my headphone jack. And you'll see the mic microphone is this input, and this is your headphone jack. Now somehow Gateway got real smart, and I know this has happened to and other people have used this. And this is what they call a combination port. It's the most fantastic thing I've ever seen. Now this looks like an ordinary headphone output that you could plug your headphones in okay somehow in my reading and research which is very valuable can we see any kind of a red dot maybe I screwed it up now <laughs> anyway Focusing is tough. This is an optical, a digital optical cable which transmits light as the audio signal. One of the most freakish thing. Toslink is the other name for this, which is a short or a uh, uh, anachronism. I'm not quite sure what the right word is there. For uh, Toshiba and... Uh, Toshiba was the one of the first people, I believe, in conjunction with Sony, possibly, um, to make this uh, fantastic way of transmitting digital information over light. And this has been around for quite a while, but <laughs> what I didn't know 
is that I had one built into this, which is a, both analog. So you could plug your headphones in, yes, but you can also plug a digital cable in here. I was, I was blown away when I found this out. So what that does is that enables me to take the output of this laptop and directly digitally uh, link it to whatever I want to use for a preamplifier or an amplifier, route that signal right into whatever else I want to decode it, which today, <clears throat> forgive them the messy vertical standings of my musings, but I'm just using an old that uh, Onkyo uh, home theater receiver, the TXNR509, because it's got an optical right on the back. Uh, an optical input, and I think most people are familiar with the the, the way that the, the regular optical cables look. Now this is what a reg regular optical cable looks like on the end without that little tit. <laughs> it's nice to be able to use a video camera to see if things are clean or not. But this is another optical. It transmits light through a tube in the middle, plastics. Some of them even use glass. Now, this was an upgrade that I tried to do. We're pushing into 11 minutes. This is going to be a long one. Can we read where it says glass? Can I get this to read? Can I get the focus? Maybe better lighting. Where is it? It's probably here. It's just not liking my... Anyway, this is a... Um, was an upgraded cable that was actually made out of glass. So the, uh, in my... Uh, there we go. Maybe we can see it now. Uh, there we go. High purity glass fiber inside optical cable. Um, so some are made out of glass. Some are made out of uh, plastics and whatnot to transmit that light. I always thought glass would be a better way to do it, so I thought I would try it and see if I notice a difference. Do I? Eh, possibly not a huge difference, um, but it's an interesting idea nonetheless. Cables are something that we'll have to save for another day. Uh, but um, So anyway, my point to that was, if you take a look at these two optical cables, you'll see that one of them has a long, a long uh, neck on it, and that is uh, made for, um, <laughs> it's a special cable made to be used as a 3.5 millimeter, um, so it's, it's a very interesting um, hard to classify these, the two different ends, you know, say USB A, USB C. <laughs> these, I'm not sure what I would call one. I, I suppose they're both male. Um, but this one has got an extension for a 3.5 millimeter over here is all it is. And this one is your standard optical, optical cable. And they do the same thing. They just will allow different hookups. Um, so anyway, I found this uh, inexpensive optical cable that would plug directly in to our laptop. But um, if you had to, they make a special adapter for these. So all you would need to do would be to snap on a piece uh, that would go on here that would convert that into a long, uh, uh, I believe it's 3.5 millimeter, or phono input is, is might be another way to look at that <laughs> phono style. The, the, the nomenclature is very difficult with these things. Um, anyway, so they look different. But these two things do the same. Where are we? I'm trying to do this using my looking through my phone. And so anyway, we've got an output. A digital output to our Onkyo and we just select the uh, optical on the back and we're able to come up here and we're able to um, <clears throat> sorry for the jiggling we're able to come up here to our laptop and I am running a program called FUBAR now, this program is, has been easy for me, and um, 
and it sounds quite good. A lot of the people have talked about it being um, one of the better uh, you know, audio software packages, which is free, um, and it's uh, relatively low bandwidth, uh, and it sounds fantastic, and it's got a lot of adjustments and whatnot. Um, I wish I could give you more information on FUBAR. But we're just going to turn this down a little bit. Uh, but uh, it's worked out pretty fantastic, and the only downside is that I can still hear the fan unless I get to a certain volume level with this laptop. But what that's allowed me to do is basically take all my music uh, and be able to um, have access to it. <clears throat> have access to it. <clears throat> but here's the kicker. Right here. This can be controlled using an app on your phone. So, heh, what does that do? I'm in the other room. Now I can control my whole library on the wireless, on, using a wireless network. And this is actually a phone with no SIM card in it. So this, this is an old phone I had, an old Samsung S5. And what I've done is I've loaded a program called FUBAR Controller onto the phone, hook up to the Wi-Fi network that the laptop is on, and I can now talk to my laptop, which is hooked up digitally to how whatever you want, and you can control your music on a device like this right from your chair, right from the other room, or right from outside because you're using a, the wireless network to communi communicate with this now. So what that does, unlike Bluetooth, which is what a lot of people are using now, Bluetooth is only good for about 30 feet. So if you go into the kitchen, your phone is going to be streaming a radio signal that may have a rough time getting through the walls. It's a little bit different. So wireless, as you know, is a pretty robust signal. And so all that does is just send that command directly to the laptop over the wireless network. It's instantaneous, but none of this has anything to do with the quality of the music. All this is is just a, um, a controller. And so... You know, uh, it's just an amazing way to do things. And, um, you know, so you've got your whole library in your phone. Um, and you can add, add it uh, however you want. And you can hook your phone up or you can pull a chip out. You can put your chip into, um, you know, your chip, which you've worked on probably like I did on a laptop to originally get all the music together and, and put it somewhere where it can be easily found um, and just end up putting it on an external chip. This one is um, actually not even stored locally. So on this, this phone here is, is uh, not even holding any information. All it's doing is asset, accessing the information um, that is on the laptop. And so on the laptop over the past 10 years, I've got a lot of different ways, uh, a lot of different things going on and, um, I can access them all on folders on my, uh, on the laptop. And so, I mean, uh, the ability to be able to, to choose anything you want at any particular time, uh, the Commodores, you know, uh, <laughs> Fancy dancer, come on. Oh, some, see, sometimes it does that. Did I hit the wrong one? Let's try that again. No. Um, there are technical difficulties. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't like the order uh, of things. And so I have to sort of start at the top.
and then come down. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, it's some sort of a sorting. Uh, so it views it as next. Let's see, is it gonna? There we go. So if you do it that way, it will allow you to advance to the next one. But if you try to choose it, it sees it out of order sometimes. So anyway, but it's all right there at your fingertips. Uh, volume. And even your volume can be controlled by the by your the volume of your phone, your little buttons on the side. Um, so it's um, it's something to behold. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to stay with me today. We're going to cap this off at 20 minutes. I hope you've uh, enjoyed today's show, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.